Welcome to this week's edition of the Weekend Triathlon. Let's roll that intro and get stuck into this week's news. Like and subscribe for more. Well, top of the news this week is that I've got four triathlon news items for you only this week. And the main focus of the week is going to be more on age group of racing than what it is on professional racing, which is a decided move away from what we normally do here on the week in triathlon. And the first piece of news that I have for you for, of the week was that at the Grand Rapids Triathlon 2017, T1 took on a completely new meaning. And that was especially so for Kevin Collins and Sharon, Shannon Wright, who used their T1 between swim and bike to quickly consummate their relationship by having a snap wedding. That's right, T1, shedding the wetsuits, getting into cycle gear, and heading off on the bike leg included getting married, and they managed to do all of that in a transition time of only 4 minutes 41 seconds. So that must be classified either as a super speedy normal transition or a super speedy we- wedding, whichever way you want to go about it. But Because they got together at the Grand Rapids Triathlon originally, they thought that would be the perfect venue to be able to have their their wedding. And when they got in touch with the organizers, the organizers were behind it 100% to be able to incorporate their wedding into the triathlon event itself and have it in T1 between swim and bike. So, uh, congrats to them. The only thing that the organizers did do was they organized the two of them a transition area in a garden just adjacent to the main transition area so that their exchanging of vows wouldn't impede any other triathlete wanting to do their absolute best at the sprint distance. Then heading on to a touch of professional news and that was that Jonathan Brownlee received a letter from Marisol Casado, the president of the ITU congratulating him on his victory at the Leeds Triathlon and expressing her feelings that his victory at Leeds would is such a brilliant um, example and motivating factor for all of those young budding triathletes and anybody wanting to get into the sport of triathlon. Small minor technicality was that Jonathan finished second and his brother Alistair finished first. Later on in the week, Marisol Casada issued an apology stating that Spain's heat wave of 36 degrees that subsequently went up to 42 degrees was the motivating factor for her making this error of judgment. But with the size of budget that the ITU has, I'm pretty sure that when Marisol Casada drafted the letter, had it printed and signed the letter, she was sitting in an air-conditioned office so a 36 degree temperature outside would have had no impact whatsoever on her ability to be able to draft an accurate letter. But that's just my t- take on the matter. Let me know what you think about that down below. Either which way, it was a little bit of an oops moment and a bit of an awkward moment for Jonathan, considering that he was fully expecting Alistair to be receiving a similar letter congratulating him on second place. So, touch awkward between the two brothers but all in good spirits. Then, heading back to the world of, of age grouper racing, and that is that age grouper um, Ellie Goodall made mainstream media um, headlines, television news in Australia after she completed the 70.3 Cairns event um, last weekend. And she's targeted um, I am Bustleton on the 6th of December as being her debut at the full iron distance racing. What's made um, Ellie's situation so completely different and what's been a major motivating factor what got her onto ma- mainstream television news is that through the process of following her coach's guidelines on how to get herself fit and fast enough and with enough endurance to be able to handle the 70.3 cans as a completely sideline issue, she happened to lose 114 kilos in the process. For those of you in the States, 
we're talking about in the region of 240 pounds that she lost in the process of training up for a 70.3. And what she said in, in her interview is that previously she's tried to go on diets, tried to go on various crash diets, lose a couple of pounds, gain a whole lot more, lose a couple of pounds, gain a whole lot more. We all know the situation, the typical yo-yo situation where you what you gain back is so much more than what you lose and that comes from calorie restricting and all she did was switch to a healthy whole food nutrition strategy that would complement her training because her focus was in being able to complete a 70.3 and in the process the weight fell off and because the weight fell off in the process of switching to a healthy lifestyle she's managed to, to keep, keep the weight off and when she continues to train up to her full distance Ironman, she's likely to be keeping the weight off through that event and even further because she has set, stated herself that she enjoys the sport of triathlon so much she can't see herself giving it up any time within the next decade or three. So kudos to you, Ellie, for having been able to lose the 240 pounds, the 114 kilos and a superb inspiration to anybody that's sitting on the couch, yes, you can do it as well. Then finally, back onto the world of pro professional triathlon, and to give you an idea of how much different professional triathlon is than, say, for instance, professional golf, let's have a look at the order of merit as it stands at the moment for 2017. The top earning female triathlete so far for 2017 has earned $50,000 cumulatively over the past five and a half months in race winnings, and that being Daniela Rave. The top earning male athlete is Richard Murray, and he's earned $92,578 over five and a half months. Now, just to put this in perspective, the um, Ironman organization issues, on average, 700 to 800 male and 700 to 800 female pro cards every year. So in other words, you're looking at somewhere, and if you add the ITU racing into that as well, you're looking at somewhere in the ballpark of about a thousand male and a thousand female pro athletes. And if you look at the order of merit, the athletes sitting in 50th place after five months of racing, five and a half months of racing, the athletes sitting in 50th place is um, Heather Jackson on the women's side and uh, Marco Albert on the men's side and over five months or should I say five and a half months Heather Jackson has earned two and a half thousand dollars in race earnings and that puts her in 50th place out of a thousand on Marco Albert's side he's earned three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars over five and a half months and that puts him in 50th place out of approximately a thousand athletes. So from that point of view, yes, you have one or two athletes at the top that are earning reasonable money. We won't talk about, talk about it being huge money in in the, in the sport of in the world sport of triathlon. Reasonable money, but the vast majority of pro triathletes out there are earning less than minimum wage. So the next time you think that pro triathlon is a shortcut to financial fortunes, think again. And that brings me to the end of this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon. Be sure to like this video, share it out amongst your friends. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button down there. Also, while you're down there as well, post any comments, questions, criticisms that you have in that comment section down below. Then lastly, until the two of us meet again, stay carved up for the win. I'll see you next time. Cheers.